So here we are on the other side of the Antares Rift. It's me, Sulu, Chekhov, and Mr. Redshirt Walker. We're gonna walk around, speaking of Walker, and we're gonna we're gonna see what's around this place. There are only three screens to this place, so we're going to be restricted to this little strip of land on the other side of the Antares Rift for the remainder of the mission. That's a pretty interesting crater. And that's a pretty interesting item on the ground. Perhaps we should uh, pick it up. Looks like a ship crashed here. Let's see what's uh, going on with all that. Some kind of a life pod of Vurian design. So it seems to have crashed here. What's up with these rocks all around? They're, uh, they're more organic than mineral. That's interesting. What's in the giant hole? I'm pretty interested in that. Tricor tells us that this is a weak spot in this dimension. Is there any, uh... No, there's no walking over to it. It's blocked off by, uh... By, you know, whatever keeps us from walking off cliffs and stuff. So let's come over here. We got one more screen to this place. Hey! It's an old friend! <gasps> Spock! What have they done to you? Emotional intensity of a previously unknown level. And happiness is a powerful emotion. No, of course not. Spock has fought his whole life to not have emotions. He wants to be free of emotions. This is the antithesis of my desires. Spock! Is there anything we can uh is there anything we can do for you? He's like so happy that it's like difficult for him to talk. It's like really scary. The creature that has done this is called the Savant, a being of great power that has transformed itself into a creature of living emotion. It can form a link with any creature with psionic abilities, including Vulcans. It taps into latent emotions and amplifies them, using them to increase its emotional stability. So it's taking what little emotion Spock has and like amplifying it like times a million so that it itself can be happy. I guess the Savant's goal is to be a... Uh, to be totally happy so if it was cut off from Spock and from like every other people's emotions it would be alone but it could cope we enhance its enjoyment but are not essential to its survival but it could exist without us well that is a uh, that's good to know I am summoning the savant it may be in your best interest to communicate with it I recommend you negotiate with the savant to escape this place oh no Spock is not expendable <laughs> that's a uh, that's a witty little bon mot there, but uh, there you go. If we can find a weakness, we might be able to take you with us. We're not leaving here without Spock, and that's one of the keys to doing well in this mission is to get the Savant to let you take Spock with you and get out of here safely without your ship being ripped apart. Hmm. Let's see. All right, we, we have several things we can ask Spock here. So, uh, yeah, there were some strange stones back on the first screen. We'll ask about those as well. It refuses to deal with issues of logic and free will. It is not a violent creature, but is extremely fixated on its goals and believes what it does is morally justified. So, uh, let's, uh, let's keep talking to him. Let's see about the stones. This entire pocket dimension is organic and psionic in order to maintain the Savant's life force. Negative emotions that are suppressed might be absorbed in mineral-like pockets beneath the surface of this dimension. So the stones contain negative emotions so that the savant doesn't have to deal with them. Let's see what kind of weakness we can, uh, we can get from it. Its reliance on emotion is its main weakness. It is a creature of intense needs and despite having millions of years of joy, it still retains a subconscious fear of losing its joy, of experiencing negative emotions. Well, we've got those stones. Let's see, uh, let's, let's do the witty choice now. Let's, uh... <laughs> but he's he's trying to suppress it. He's trying to, uh... So since these are organic, let's try scanning them, actually. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much the same thing, uh, what's-his-face said, Sulu. So, uh, Spock has, uh, told us everything we need to know, and now the Savant will pop up out of that giant hole in the middle. Woo! There he is. There's the Savant. 
I wish you and all entities nothing but joy. Well, we don't need to know who he is, because Spock already told us. Well, let's see about that. Let's ask questions. Let's not be confrontational with him. The Savant's kind of uh, weak emotionally, so we better be careful with him. So he thinks he's doing something nice for them, basically. And the conversation just kind of ends there. So let's walk back over here. Because now, now that we know that the uh, Savant's weakness is its reliance on emotion, and there are negative emotions sitting around here, we can, uh, we can take the stones that we have uh, received. We can take the stones that are on the ground here. We haven't received them yet. Let's see if a scan will do any good on them. This stone has a cell structure. It must be organic. It has a wave signature indicative of some sort of psionic abilities. Yes, I hope so too. Here's a pile of stones over here. This is the uh, really important one. Intense psionic energy. They are going to be quite important, but we don't want to just pick them up, you know, off the, you know, off the ground. They're too intense for that. Um, if you pick them up with your bare, you can get them with your bare hands, but uh, Walker will go do it. And like the psionic energy off, energy off them is so intense that he will get like vaporized by the stones it's like it's a really intense scene like he gets knocked back and like he gets kill phasered it's pretty insane but you can pick up the other ones safely like you can pick up these individual stones without anything too terrible happening to you and you can pass them around to the rest of the crew to have them feel the emotions as well <laughs> oh See, this is the kind of uh, intensity that it's talking about. <laughs> All of those wonderful Russian jokes. Your humanity. <laughs> He's telling everybody how he feels about them because he doesn't want to lose. It's like a, it's like a deathbed admission type of thing. <laughs> oh, so you say? Is that your excuse for not getting the women? So uh, Kirk is kind of a uh, Kirk is kind of wigged out by these types of things. But we're gonna go around and pick up every one and examine it carefully. The blue stone is reminiscence for a lost loved one. Captain? Regret. Oh, that's a pretty sad emotion, too. This place must be getting to me. I should probably uh, stop picking up stones off the ground. How about Mr. Red over here? We're just going to toy with Kirk a little and, uh. Oh. Uh, what's it? Uh, paranoia. Here we go. <laughs> I didn't say anything, Captain. <laughs> Get hold of yourself, Captain. That was not... Yeah. Well, I think we've got time. Time seems to be different in this dimension, and we've got all the time in the world. Spock's here. We're all here. Confusion. Captain? Oh, hopelessness. Hopelessness, trapped in a little stone. I should have never let the ship go in there. Ah. I mean, uh, let's find Spock. And finally, this little uh, pink one over here. What's it do? Ah, more paranoia. Everyone's coming to get me. Sir, why I never. <laughs> they all came down here too. They're going to kill me. They're going to pants me and steal my wallet and laugh at me. Ha ha ha. Now the only one we have left to pick up is this over here. And we need to use the pouch that we found on the ground in order to get that. I guess it belonged to Emanata at some point. But like she's so incapacitated by emotions that she can't even like move. So uh, we're going to come pick these up right here. I'll get them Captain. You want to use the pouch on them otherwise Walker will die and your score will get lowered. So... You be sure to use the pouch on those. Boy, am I getting an odd feeling from these. I'm getting a good feeling from these. I'm thinking that's how we're going to get out of here. Now, before we go to deal with the Savant, let's talk to the Virian. Greetings, Lord Kirk. I am Imanata. All right. And now we're going to basically exhaust our choices with her. We can, uh, we can ask what, uh, how she came to be here. Wow, that's, a uh, that's pretty ingenious, actually. 
and I was warped into the Antares sector, traveled through the rift into this place, and the Savant sustained her. She's pretty much going to be happy forever. She's the only one left of her race. That sucks. And you can, uh, you can uh, keep going through all these choices. Oh, uh, well, uh, that's, that's very sweet and all, but what were you doing on the ship? Wow, he really is paranoid. Good lord. Well, as long as the intent wasn't to harm. Uh, let's see. So, uh, what can we expect from the Savant? Oh, uh, really now? Okay. Alright, well, uh, let's see. Alright, I would appreciate the Savant being informed. Well, let's talk about freeing Spock, though. Let's try to broker a deal on Spock's behalf through Imanata to the Savant. All kinds of middlemen going on here. Speak with the Savant. Perhaps things will be clearer. So let's, uh, let's ask more things. Okay. What is the Savant? A being who found that the physical form impaired his emotions, and so he discarded it as a lord discards his raiment. An entity of great benevolence and joy. Through my psionic talents, we are linked in ecstasy eternal. Oh, he's, a uh, he's just off to the right. He's, uh, around the block. Easy to get to. You'll see him. He's the giant beam of light that we summoned. The Fountainhead. Ah, Ayn Rand. Terrible reading. So, uh, let's see. Okay, and, uh, let's see. Yeah, we would appreciate that. It is done. So, the Savant knows our situation now. Anything else we can say? I will. Good luck. Are you willing to help me? Yes. Alright, well, I think we've uh, pretty much done everything we can do here. So now let's go and let's deal with the Savant. And now the Savant is very fragile emotionally. And it's been a while since I've talked to him. So I'm going to try to, uh, I'm going to save my game first. Because you can actually upset him so much that he disappears, goes away. He's like, oh, boo-hoo, what have I done? And he goes away and it, like, rips apart the entire fabric of the universe. And you can actually, like, the whole party just vaporizes it dies everyone dies the whole universe dies because you are not nice to the savant so uh yeah you gotta you gotta walk on some pretty sketchy ground around him so let's go ahead yeah let's save our game then all right and now what well we don't want to use the stones on him just yet we don't want to we don't want to be too hasty here so what's up savant whoa a little bit defensive is he yikes That's very presumptuous. How does he know that they're not without joy? Just because they don't, uh, well, the Burian was without joy. Her whole race died. But how does, how can he presume to know that Spock is without joy? He has been conditioned to deny his emotions. But that's what he wanted. He wanted to deny his emotions so that he could be all logical and smart. Well, that is true, but it's a little harsh. We the the savant's kind of a softy, so we want to uh Yeah, that that's way too confrontational right there. Okay, well, uh Kirk is pretty mad regardless of what we want to say. Spock doesn't want your gift, he doesn't need your gift. That's true, he doesn't. So let's tell the savant that and see what he says. I have the power to make certain it will come to no harm if you agree to leave now and never return. That's not happening. Hmm. Not going anywhere without my Spock. Hmm, this is pretty tough. There we go. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, reasoning with him is obviously not going to do anything. No, we are not coming back without Spock. Not without Spock. But let's try. We gotta at least try here. <laughs> Captain, I am reasonable. I'm just, like, way smarter than you, so duh, why don't you just do what I say? Huh. Oh yes, let's uh, let's appeal to his uh, let's appeal to his vanity. Why don't we? But he's not having any of it. Hmm. 
Well, we tried our best to reason with him, so let's start hitting him with the emotions. Let's... Kirk is in the windup. He's pitching a stone at him. The hard drive hiccups. This object has no effect against me. It is too small. Nothing. Anything. We gotta just keep trying. Maybe there'll be some kind of buildup. Maybe it's like slow burn salsa. It'll just get hotter and hotter. If all these things are inside him. Nope, nothing. Well, uh, how about this? Eat this, Savant. Do not use such a tactic again on me, I warn you! Oh, God. Huh. Not feeling those good vibrations. This is where you have to be careful right here. Huh. Oh, this is pretty rough. I'm not, a. Uh... Let's see. I'm... This is a really tough part right here, but I think I'm going to go with... Let's see. I'm going to go with two. There we go. Now, now that we've uh, made him experience sadness and everything. No, we don't want to destroy him. There we go. We want to convince him that what he's doing is bad and let us take Spock with us. No, you're not a monster, Savant. You just... There we go. You have lost respect for others. Everyone may have different goals, different ideals than you, and they have the right to pursue them. That's what makes people happy, not having emotions just flooding their brain and making their mouths turn up in a grim rictus of happiness. I am in no mood to argue. You and your scientists may be freed. Enjoy your universe. So now we get out with, uh... We get out with our ship and our friend and our wives. Excellent. All crew members are safely aboard. He did. He had an eternity of pure enjoyment and he gave it up. Well, but Spock isn't human. He's Vulcan. He lives by a different code. All right. That's right. Makes you think. This is a this can be a very cerebral game sometimes, and I really enjoy it. But what's bothering Doctor McCoy? I love that little goofy song right there. <laughs> yes, if only McCoy had been with us. But it's going to be a while before Spock and McCoy join us on any more missions again. We're going to get to give the uh, other crew members a chance. So how did we do today? Yeah, 91%. That seems to be the best I can really ever do. Voids is a very tough mission to score 100% on. But uh, they're very impressed with our work. And we did about as well as we could do. So uh, bid y'all adieu. And we'll see you tomorrow for a museum piece.